With Ubiquiti moving to their Unified Network application, time is limited on their old Unified controller. So today, I want to show you how to set up the new network app and transfer your current Unified sites to it. Let's get started. The new Unified Network application requires a Mongo database, and Mongo database requires an init script. So let's start there first. All right, go ahead and open up your favorite text editor. Mine is Notepad++. We're going to create a file called init-mongo.js. The basic contents of this file I'll leave in the description so you can grab that. Once you have that, go ahead and paste it into your text editor. Once you've got that pasted in, we're going to need to update the variables with our own usernames, passwords, and database names. In the script, you'll notice that there are a bunch of variables that are in capitals, such as MongoDB, MongoUser, MongoPass. Those are the things we need to change. Since we're creating a database for Unify, I'm going to just name everything Unify in here. So we'll get rid of the MongoDB name. We're going to rename this to Unify, Mongo user, I'm going to do the same as with Mongo pass. The DB owner is good. Mongo DB name, once again, it's going to be Unify. All right, this one here, the Mongo DB name underscore stat, we're going to leave the stat, but change the rest of it to Unify. Mongo user, Unify, Mongo pass, Unify, and you can change these to whatever you'd like, but just doing this to make it simple. And once again, the last one here, leave the stat and name it Unify. You'll notice that each item here that's in quotes, you want to leave the quotes in there. We'll double check again real quick. Unify, 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 unify stat, unify, unify. Yes, everything looks good. So that part's done. The next thing I got to do is create a subfolder in my updata folder and then drop the script into there. That's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to open up my updata folder. And if you don't know where yours is located, it's going to be the IP address of your server, backslash, and then app data. Once you're in your app data folder, I'm going to create a new folder in here. I'm just going to call it script. It's a temporary one. We don't really need to keep it for long. Once this is ran for the database, then we're pretty much done with it. But I may need it in the future for something else, so that's why I just named it script. So I'm going to go back to my notepad. Now that that's created, let's go ahead and save it. All right, I'm going to save it into my script folder here that I just created. The file name is going to be init dash mongo.js and I'm going to hit save and let's go check in that file to make sure it's actually there. Open up the script and there it is. So now we can go ahead and close our notepad. We're done with that. If you were like me and attempted to do this, probably found out that it didn't work the first time, then you're going to have to wipe out the whole container and start all over. If that's you, then let me show you how to take care of that real quick. I don't have Mongo installed yet. I'm going to show you the first step on a different database. I'm not actually going to delete it, but just show you what you need to do. So you'd find your MongoDB in this list under your list of applications. Click on the icon. You're going to go down to remove, and then you want to make sure that it says also remove image, and then you hit yes, delete it. That's the first step. Once that's gone, then we need to go and make sure that the data is actually out of the app data folder. You can go to your app data folder directly from your machine. You find it in the list, right click, delete. But if it's like mine, it's going to say you don't have permission to do that. If that happens to you, then let me show you how to get around that. Within Unraid, you go up to the terminal option in the top right, Click on the little icon for it. it, pops up your terminal window, you're going to type cd and then a space and then double dots and that'll get you back to the root directory. And you can do an ls for list command, shows you everything that's in there. We're going to need to go into the mnt directory, so I'm going to cd space mnt, and it shows you all the disks. My updated folder is my cache drive, so I'm going to change directory to that. We'll list out stuff again just to make sure, yep, there's app data. So I'll do another cd into there, cd app data. Do another list, and then you'll find your MongoDB listed in this list here. Once again, I don't have it in here, but what you do next is you do rm space dash r. So it's remove. The rm is for remove. Dash r is recursive, basically meaning everything below. And then you put in the name of the folder you want to remove, the directory, exactly as it's spelled. Once you press enter, it'll go back to your command prompt. And just to make sure it's gone, let's do another ls command. Look through the list, and you'll notice it's gone. It was already gone for me, but that's that's how you get rid of it. All right, I'll go ahead and close this now. I've kind of noticed a trend lately that a lot of these videos that I put out, there's always some kind of documentation, some kind of script or something that you need to have. So I'm, I'm toying with the idea of starting up a newsletter with maybe a small article and then take these guides that I'm doing and actually writing them out step by step with all the information that you need in them. And then maybe I do some postings for some local meetups or you know something of that nature. So what do you think? You think it's a good idea? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's go over to the MongoDB install now. So let's go to apps and the search option. We're going to search for MongoDB, M-O-N-G-O. So the official MongoDB here is the one I'm going to be using. So you'll click install. 
And the first thing we need to do is go over to the top right and change from basic view to advanced view. And then the repository, we're going to change that information. Once again, I will leave this in the description. So go to the description, copy that, and then under repository here, we're going to change that right there. Scroll down some more. Network type, that's fine. The port number here, let's check to see if that's available. Show Docker allocations, Control F, 27017. There's only two, two listed, nothing selected there, so we are good on that. Host path one is fine, so we're set there. Let's continue on. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these Docker allocations now. We don't need that. The last option in the list here is add another path, port, variable, label, or device. So I'm going to open up that, click on it. Config type, we want to have that as a path. The name, we're going to name this unify init-mongo.js. The container path, once again, will be in the description, so go ahead and paste that in. And the host path is going to be that script that you saved. It's going to be the location of that. So let's browse to there. We know it's under the app data folder. Then I put it in a script folder. Then we need to add in, after that, init-mongo.js, which is the file name that you had made. And for access mode, we want this to be read-only. And the required, we're going to set to yes. Then we'll click Add, scroll all the way down, Apply, let it install, and then when it's all done, we're going to hit Done. Next thing we need to do is go to our Docker tab, find the MongoDB, start that up, and it failed. Great. Uh, well, that didn't go according to plan. Well, apparently this old server I have here does not have AVX support, so... How about, at this point, let's jump over to my other server, my production server, and I'll show you what you need from over there. Bear with me a moment. Let me get that up. So here we are on my production server, and what we're looking for is the container IP address. Since my MongoDB is in a folder, I'm going to go ahead and expand that folder so I can see it. So right here, MongoDB, this first set here is the numbers we're looking for. We do not need the port number, but just note it. So you'll find your container IP address, not the server address. The container IP address is what you need. So you'll find that, you copy it. So once you have the container IP address copied down, we're going to be all set with Mongo. So I'm going to jump back to my other server now. But while I'm doing that, if you're finding this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe while you're at it. All right, let's start on the Unify setup. We're going to go to Apps. Into the search option, we're going to type in Unify. What we're actually looking for is Unify Network Application, but Unify should be fine. So down here, second item down, is Unify Network Application from Linux Server. That's the one that we want, so go ahead and hit Install there. And it's giving me a warning that some of the ports are in use, and I figured it would be, so go ahead and hit OK if that comes up for you. The name is fine. The first thing I want to do is change the network type to host. Then we're going to need to go search for the port availability to find out which one is causing the issue. So I'm going to go to the bottom, show Docker allocations, control... Whoa, that's huge. Zoom got ahead of me. There we go. 200, 151, there we go. All right, that's better. All right, control F, and the first port number, we'll put that in there, see if that shows up. Just those two, that one's good. And 3478, copy, paste, those are good. 10,001, 3, 3, good, 8080. Get a sneaking suspicion, that's the one. Yep, yep, there it is. All right, so let's see if 8082 is available. That one looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and change my port number here to 8082. And we'll keep looking, 1900, copy, paste, just a 3, good. 8843, copy, paste, just a 3. Oh, that's the same one. So, nope, that's a different one. That's 8800. Copy, paste, that one's good. 6789, that one's good. 5514, that's good as well. All right, so those are all clear. All right, the next we're going to need to do is to update these fields here. And if you'll notice, the Mongo user, Mongo pass, is the same as our init file. So we're going to put in the same information there. So the Mongo user, I had done Unify, so that one is good. The Mongo password, once again, I did Unify. If you change yours to something else, then make sure that you put that in. And for Mongo host, that is going to be the container IP address that we had copied down. And for mine, that was like 172.17.0.2. But you put in whatever your information was. Since I don't have this actually running on here, this is going to fail, but I'm just going to put that in for the time being. The port number is the port number that you had and the default is 27017, which is what's already in there, so that's good. The Mongo database name, Unify is what I put in, so that's already there, that's good. And for memory limit, we're going to up that to 4096. Everything else is fine, so let's go to the bottom, hit apply, let it install, and when it's done, we're going to hit done. All right, that's done. Now we go over to the Docker tab. We're going to turn on the auto start for the Mango. 
Mango. You're going to need to turn on the auto start for the MongoDB and for the Unify network application. Normally we'd go over to the icon for the application that we just installed, click on it, and you do Web UI, but you'll notice that's not here in this option. So what you need to do is go to the server IP address, which for me is 10.0.0.11, and then we're going to put in the colon and the port number that was assigned for it was 8443. Press enter, and it should come up. It's not going to on mine because my processor doesn't have the requirements that Mongo needs. So let me jump over to mine and show you on there. All right, so here we are on my production one. When you first bring it up, it may say that it's insecure. If that does, just go ahead and go to advanced and then proceed. And unfortunately, I can't show you the initial login screen, but you'll have some stuff that you need to put in. The first thing is gonna be the network application name. And I think Unify Network is default. And if that's there, then go ahead and leave it. Or you can name it to whatever you'd like. Next, you select your country. My notes here, I have something about a checkbox, so go ahead and select the checkbox. And then next, which is in the very bottom right corner, so way down there. Next, it's gonna want you to sign in with your Ubiquity account, or you can create one in the bottom right. I was gonna go through all that and show you how that works, but once you have your username and password entered, go ahead and hit next. Then we wanna enable auto backup, and then we're gonna hit next again. Next, you'll have device setup, or you can just click next. And the next screen after that's gonna be the Wi-Fi setup. So you'd enter a Wi-Fi name and password, then you hit next, or if you're gonna import, then just go ahead and skip all that. Then you review your configuration and you hit finish. If you're coming over from another Unify controller, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is to restore from a backup. And if you don't have a restore file yet, and you still have your old system running, then to do that, you go to settings, system, backups, then you do download. The only thing you need is settings, so go ahead and just do settings only, and then you click download. And you save that file to wherever you'd like. Then to restore from backup, you go to settings, system, backups, restore, you browse to that file, which for me, I think I threw it under music. There it is. You hit open. It's going to open it up. Then you hit restore. And that'll restore all the devices back to your system. I really enjoy the Unify interface and have been using Ubiquity products for a few years now. Do you use Unify or do you use something else? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then check out one of these videos next. And I'll see you in the next one.